Best friends, happy new year. This video was highly requested on my other how to make a wig videos. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a wig without cutting your wefts. Now, granted, you do have to cut your weft when you get to the top of your wig. But other than that, everything is just seamless and zigzag all the way through. So just in case if you wanted to save your bundles and take them out and make them into a different wig, this is the method for you. I'm gonna be talking through this video. This is gonna be a lengthy video, all right? So, do not go in my comments talking about here talking too much. That's what a tutorial is for. Okay, happy new year and let's get to the video. So you need your handy dandy ne curved needle with your nylon thread. I like to use nylon and you definitely want a curved needle because it'll make it easier to sew. You need your mesh cap or your dome cap, your wig cap, whatever kind of cap you want to use. You need a wig stand and a blockhead. Uh, this one is about $80 and the blockhead is about $30. This one is about $20 and the blockhead is about $30. You need your Sharpie, some T-pins, and some scissors, and of course, your measuring tape. So, of course, you're gonna need hair for this tutorial. I'm going to be using some hair from African Mall. Um, I have two 26s and a 24-inch bundle with a closure. I don't know why I wanted to say frontal. This is a closure. So, of course, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a closure wig. When it comes to my blueprints that I'm going to show you how to do in a second, you guys, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of DMs from you guys asking where the blueprints. If you look on my highlight stories where I tell you that they are, I only have one tab for wig making, and it's in there. All right. If you actually click that tab on my Instagram, It'll start showing you like me making wigs. It'll show you my blueprints. It'll show you how I do my grids, all of that. You can always refer back to that if it's hard for you to find videos of me doing certain stuff, okay? Okay, let's do measuring. So you're gonna need some measuring tape. You can purchase measuring tape anywhere. Your local drug stores, your 99 cent stores, Target, Target that is. Um, your grocery store, Amazon. Amazon Prime, hey. You can purchase this anywhere. You need measuring tapes. If you are going to start making wigs for people, you are going to need measurements, okay? I detailed show you guys how to do measurements in my first ever how to make a wig video. I'm gonna go through it real quick right here because we're only needing two measurements for, for a closure, okay? So, your first measurement that you're gonna need, and I'm gonna tell you why, you're gonna need it, is your circumference, all right? Your circumference is crucial to you making a wig because you need to know what size blockhead to buy. And when I say blockhead, I'm talking about this girl right here. You need to know what size blockhead to get because this is the same size as my head, all right? And so when I make my wigs on this or measure on this and then I sew it or hand sew it, it's going to be the exact same size of my head, okay? So you need to make sure that you have a blockhead. Do not make wigs off of styrofoam heads because they're not gonna work. Blockheads are sold at in inches. So you wanna take your measuring tape, you wanna put it on and wrap it around your entire headline. You kinda wanna make it snug a little bit. You don't want it too loose because if it's too loose, it's gonna give you a bigger measurement than what you really are, okay? And plus I have a wig on with braids and a ponytail underneath. So I'm gonna pull it tight. And so it's gonna tell me my measurement. I know for a fact I'm a, 20, a 22 and a half, 23. Okay, so when I make my wigs, I use a 23 because I have hair underneath. So what, I, what advice I'm going to tell you is when you're ordering your blockhead, you need to take into consideration if you have a lot of hair or not, all right? Because if you have a lot of hair like me and you wear your braids underneath, and your hair is growing out and you kind of have braids and a ponytail, you might want to half size up, okay? If you are, if you have really, really short hair and all you can do, you can do is just slick your hair back or whatever, you might you might want to decrease a half size because your wig might be a little bit too big for you. So it's just super common sense. It's just up to you and your preference of how you want your wig to fit. So the measurement number two is you want to take your same measuring tape and you want to measure from the front of your hairline to where your hairline start all the way to the back of your hairline where your hairline ends and that's going to tell you how long you want to pull down your wig cap or your a mesh cap or whatever cap that you're using to make a wig okay so you want to measure those two measurements because i'm about to show you right now so we have donisha right here right shaped just like somebody's head 
you have the front of the hair face where it's flat, right? And then you have the back where it has the hook, just like a normal person's head. Flat, back with a hook, and then it goes down. Super simple, because y'all be tripping in my comments. <laughs> We're gonna take your measuring tape, we're gonna measure around, and it's gonna equals 23. Boom, we already know this because it's made for that. So when you order in your blockhead, you need to order your size correctly. The reason why I have saran wrap on here is because I use this to color wigs. And so I don't wanna mess up my blockhead too fast because once the cork and the, and the canvas get wet, it's easy for it to tear. So for the second measurement, you wanna take your measuring tape and you wanna put it at the beginning of your dome cap, okay? and you wanna pull it all the way down to where your measurement ended. So I am at a 13. So I'm gonna pull it down to a 13 and that's here. This is where my, my mesh cap needs to stop. And then I will go ahead and put a T-pin right here and secure those two points in place if I was to hand sew. This cap is a very way too big. So I am gonna end up going in and tapering it to, um, make it a little bit smaller. So now that I've resized my cap, as you can see, I put a seam right in the middle of the cap. I'm gonna end up cutting that off after I make the wig, but there you go, there's a seam right there. So I'm gonna put it on my blockhead with the measurements that we already talked about. So I'm gonna put her on, secure her in the front with a T-pin, all right, turn her around. Wanna pull her to the length that the back of your hairline goes down. Mine is about 13, so it's gonna sit about right there, right? Okay, cool. We got that down pat. So you want to take your closure and you want to put it in the center of your blockhead. Now there's three lines. There's a one, two, three, right? And you want to make the middle with the middle, the side with the side, all right? So you wanna line it up with the edge of your cap right now. So once you have it lined up, you want to pull it a half inch forward. And the reason why you wanna do that is because when you cut the lace off your closure, right, you're gonna end up cutting these seams off. This is gonna help your closure lay flatter. You do not have to do this, okay? If you don't do this, you're gonna end up seeing like the, the cap in your wig and that's not what you want. So you wanna pull it forward and you wanna end up pinning it down. So I put it a half inch forward and I'm gonna pin her down, okay? You wanna flip her around, and you wanna pull her from the back, and you wanna lay her down flat. You do not want any gaps with this. Your closure needs to lay flat, and it needs to lay snug. We are going for a glueless method here, and so everything should be laying super flat at this point. All right, best friends, so we have our closure attached. It's not sewn down, but it's on there with T-pins. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I started this video, so I took one bundle of my longest webs. This is a 26 inch. I unraveled it and I folded it in half. So we're going to double it to start off sewing. All right, now, the key to a perfect flip over method is you want a weft that is thin and it's easy for you to bend without a problem. The thinner the weft, the better the install, okay? For me, the key to having a stretchy uh, wig, even though I sew through my elastic band, which does not matter because my wig is stretched to where I need it to be. So even if I'm sewing through the band, my wig is gonna fit my head because I'm sewing it on um, a mannequin head, right? So. I find for it to still have a little spring in it, you don't wanna have a whole bunch of tracks piled onto your, your wig because it's going to take away its ability to stretch, okay? I don't know if that makes sense, but um, you'll see if you try to make a wig and you just bunch a whole bunch of tracks on there, your wig is gonna be stiff, it's not gonna be able to move, and it's not gonna be flexible. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I am just gonna go ahead and draw out my guidelines. I'm not. I'm only gonna draw a few lines, not a lot. Only enough for one bundle. Now because I have 26 inches and it's longer, my bundle my bundle is a bit shorter. So for this, I'm only gonna get about maybe four to five tracks. 
that's going to be sewn onto this, right? If I had a shorter bundle, I would get more. If I was to not fold my bundles, double my bundles, I would have maybe about eight to nine tracks being able to be sewn but because i have three bundles and i want my wig to have that stretch i'm i'm going to double it and i'm going to leave that thumb space in between if you guys have not seen my first video i will link it down below so i'm just going to make my guidelines i'm doing enough for only one bundle of hair okay so this is what it looks like you just zigzagging it back and forth zigzagging it back and forth that's it so I'm only gonna do uh, these four tracks first and then we're gonna move on to the next after we sew these down so to make sewing easier you want to take a t-pin and you want to stick it to through both of your wefts all right and you want to take that weft and you want to stick it onto the lines that you made this will make it easier for you to sew you won't have to hold the tracks while you sew you can just focus on the needle and your stitching So I'm going to take my curved needle and my nylon thread. I love to use nylon over cotton because cotton tends to break and, and it tends to knot up very quickly while nylon is very sleek and strong so it'll last for a longer period of time. I like to use this for hand stitching and on my sewing machine as well. So what I do is I take my needle and put it, between, put it through both tracks okay and while I do that I am going to put it through the cap as well you could go through the elastic band if you want to or you could put it through the first layer of the cap that is up to you it's not going to shrink your cap your cap is on the mannequin head that is going to stay its shape and the, its size all right so you do not have to worry about shrinkage so what i do while i'm on the elastic band is i am going to knot it so you are seeing me pull the string put a pulling the needle through the two wefts and i'm taking one end of the string and i'm wrapping it around the needle four times and then i'm gonna pull it and make sure it is tugged so that is me knotting it so i'm gonna do that all throughout the entire process of me being on the elastic band and when i get off the elastic band where the cap is more like just cap and it's no band i'm gonna just you know go under stitch I'm gonna under stitch it and that's what I do so I go through the band when I'm on the elastic and I under stitch when I'm not on the elastic and I'm not gonna speed this up because I want you to actually see what I'm actually doing so I'm gonna take my needle put it through both webs and the mesh cap I'm going to take the ending of the string, wrap it around the needle three to four times. Once I do that, I'm going to pull the needle through and it's going to create a knot. And I'm holding one end and I'm going to pull it and make sure the knot is all the way to the web so it won't move. And that's how you secure your web. I do this both sides, beginning of the web and ending of the web. So I can make sure that my web does not budge and it's not moving and it will not fall off, okay? So now that I'm not on the elastic band, I'm going to go under the weft through the cap and the needle is going to come through out from the top. I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the string, it's going to be two sides and I'm going to put my hand through the middle and I'm going to pull the string through the middle and this, that's going to lock the stitching in. All right. So my hand is going to go in the middle right and I'm gonna just pull it now the angle of me doing this is weird because I'm filming and I don't want to stand in front of the camera so that's the reason why I'm doing it this weird ass way but other than that it's the same thing so under the tracks through the cap under the tracks through the cap is gonna the needles gonna pop out you're gonna put your hand through the through the, through the thread and pull the needle through and it's gonna lock the 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 wefts in and it's super simple you just do this motion and once you get to the elastic band on the other side you're gonna do the motion where 
where you're putting a thread and a needle through the two tracks and you're wrapping a string or the thread around the needle three to four times to lock it in. You want both ends of your weft to be super secure so you do not have any slippage, especially if you're doubling your tracks, okay? So you just want to make sure you do that through the entire process of you being on or over the elastic band. While you're not under the over the elastic band, you could go underneath the tracks. So I would prefer you guys to do that just to make sure that your tracks are secure and you won't have any type of slippage. Okay, so when you get to the point where you know you want to end that particular track, you want to double the knot, all right? So you're going to put the needle through the tracks, wrap the string around it three or four times, lock it in, and do it at the same spot again. Put a needle through the tracks, lock it in, wrap the, wrap the string around it three or four times, and lock it in so it'll be secure and it will not fall off I will say do it twice because the because the two tracks are kind of heavy and you want to just make sure that it's secure this is all about security okay so you want to move your thread out of the way right so lift it up so now I'm just going to show you how to flip your tracks over so you take your tracks and you just want to bend it right take it string is up and you just want to take both of them and, and bend it. And just make sure that the tracks are aligned with each other. Like, they're not directly on top of each other, but they're they're kind of sitting on top of each other. So when you put your T-pin in, it'll hit both of them. So, boom, your track is flipped. And then you're going to um, take the rest of your whip and T-pin it across that line. So, it'll be easier for you to sew. Okay, so you have this little hump that's going to be on the side. And you want to take your thumb and you want to push it as flat as you can, alright? Because you do not want that to be sticking up and your wig will be bumpy. So, push it down as flat as you can. And then you want to put your needle through both of those wefts and the cap. And you want to lock it in with a three wrap around stitch all right and you want to keep doing it until it gets flat this is the the situation that's going to take you guys the longest okay putting your web through the putting your needle i'm sorry putting your needle through the webs and wrapping around just to make sure this specific area is super flat because if it's not flat you're going to tell that your wig is very bumpy um and like you go alternate between going under and through the wefts. So you could go under one and then you could go through the weft once just to make sure that that whole section is super, super flat. And once you get it as flat as you want it, you, you could go ahead and sew the rest of your track down like I showed you before. So since I'm still over the elastic band, I'm going to take the needle through the two tracks, through the cap, and I'm going to wrap the, the thread around the needle three to four times, pull it to lock it in. So now that you did the flip over method and it's locked in, you want to go under the track. You see the two strings, you want to put your hand through it and pull the needle through that, all right? And it's going to lock that stitch in and you want to do that all the way across. Under the track, through the cap, pull the needle through the two strings, through the, th through the thread. Mm -hmm. and then you want to lock it in uh, this video is going to be long all right I I did not want to speed this up because I want you guys to see my hand motions and my stitching all right you can get as close as a stitch that you want to this stuff takes forever hand stitching so I was trying to get this done as fast as I could um, I'm not gonna lie this thing took me like maybe two hours to do so <laughs> I love my sewing machine y'all just don't understand but yeah Remove the T-pin so you can get into that area. You want to go under the track, through the cap, pull the needle through the two strings, and lock it in.
So now that we're at the elastic band, I'm going to go through the two tracks, through the cap. And then I am going to loop the thread around the needle three to four times. And I'm going to pull it to lock it in. Again, through the two tracks, through the cap. Pull the needle out a little bit, wrap the string around it three to four times, pull it through to lock it in. We are at the end of the track, so you want to go through both wefts through the cap, all right? You want to wrap your string around three or four times and lock it in. Now, because we're at the end of the cap, the weft, I'm sorry, you want to do this motion twice at the same spot. Go through it, lock it in three or four times, and then you'll be able to flip over your track because you have secured the entire weft. So pull your thread and your needle up to get it out of the way. I'm just going to let it lay on top of the dome head. I'm going to grab the two pieces of wefts and I'm going to bend it over, making sure that they lay flat on each other so it could be as flat as possible. Take your thumb, push the two wefts where it's folded down flat and put your needle through both of them. Like I said before, this is to ensure that you get it as flat as possible because you do not want your flip over area to be bulky because you will be able to see it in your wig, all right? So you wanna do that and you wanna do it a couple of times until it get it, until it gets as flat as you want it to. You could go through the, through the wefts, you could go under the wefts, through the rough, under the weft, just make it sure that it's super duper flat, okay? So now that I've finished sewing in that one bundle, this is what it looks like. I am going to do the same thing for the second bundle and basically almost all of the third bundle and I'm gonna show you guys how to close it in. So since we're at the top, we're going to tack down our frontal. We're going to just do this really easily. Just go through, go under the cap, through the lining of the closure, and just tack it down because we're going to do a final um, sew through when we're almost finished with a last piece of bundle. Okay, so now that we have the closure um, laid down and the the webs already going all the way up to the closure, this is the spacing that I have left, these two little side pieces. So this is when I'm going to start cutting my webs, okay? Because you want this piece, these two pieces, to be the flattest as possible, all right? So this is the only time you're gonna cut your webs, promise. So this is the how much spacing that I have left and I'm just showing you guys there's a little piece only enough behind the closure just for one piece of track this is not double these are single tracks that I'm doing thus far because you want the top of your 
wig to be as flat as possible and so when I say this when you're putting your tracks next to your closure you don't want to put them on top of your closure you want to just sit it right next to your closure like close together and then you just want to sew it down And so right here, I'm going to connect the bundle, the piece of bundle with the closure. So I'm going to go under the bundle, through the closure and the cap, and I'm going to pull it together. They're not going to overlap. They're just sitting right directly next to each other. We are almost done, I promise. Okay, so you're gonna take another piece of your weft, single track it, and you wanna lay it against the part that's missing from the side of your closure, all right? You wanna take that and you wanna sew that together with your closure as well. Now you want to knot it because you're over the elastic band. You wanna keep doing that until you get off of it and then you can loop it around. Make sure that your wefts is sitting next to your closure, not on top of your closure again, because you want to make it smooth as possible and this is what my wig it looks like. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side to close it in and this is what my wig looks like at the end. So basically you're done at this point. All you have to do is customize it to your liking. You can bleach your knots and things of that nature. Um, you do cut this little piece off that's underneath your lace all right so i'm gonna cut this excess cap off um i'm gonna get not too close to the strings because these are hand sewn so you want to make sure that you don't cut your strings so leave a little bit of um wiggle room like a little bit of the cap left around the closure because you just don't want to accidentally cut the strings and you're gonna have to re-sew that because that'll be a headache all right so cut that off and then because i'm going for the glueless route i'm gonna just show you guys me um how and where i attach my elastic band when it comes to the elastic band i like to use this elastic band right here you can use any i like to put it behind the elastic that comes on that cap itself so i sew it behind the cap on both sides and then i take my elastic and i'll just measure on myself all right because i know how wide the closure is on my head and so it's easier for me to do it that way and i will say the same thing for you guys and i'll just sew it down i ain't gonna lie i use my sewing machine to sew down these elastic bands i was actually tired of sewing at this point so i just use my sewing machine so um but i promise you that you sew it the exact same way that i showed you how to sew before just lock it in so this is my wig it's all customized i've got a little makeup on there okay the sharpie rinses off when you wash your hair and i'm gonna just plop her on top of my hairline i did my little baby hairs because i like to do that when i wear closures you don't have to of course you can make baby hairs on the closure but i like to just sit mine a little bit behind my hairline and put her on brush her and she's good to go I have a lot of customizing videos on my channel. Just browse through, you'll see me doing a lot of customization. So that's why I didn't show it. This is a 28 minute video, you guys. So I was just trying to cut it down as, uh, as good as possible. I did not want to fast forward this video much because I wanted you guys to really see exactly what I was doing. I wanna thank African Mall for sending me this hair so I can show you guys this tutorial. Of course, uh, you know, you guys ask, I will deliver. Let me know something else that you guys wanna see and i'll have it up for you guys all right and yes happy new year best friends and you know let's have a great one don't forget to follow me on instagram i'll leave my information down below in the description box i'll leave everything that i use down below in the description box for you guys all right if you have any questions or concerns feel free to leave them in the comment section and i'll be back with another one bye best friends